lobstering or fishing from a wave runner can be a lot of fun. It's, an, it's a blast. I love it. Uh, it gets you right there near the water and uh, it's real efficient, very fast getting in and out. And when you get back home, you don't have much of a, a boat to clean and uh, just flush it out, rinse it off. I do some lobstering here in the Florida Keys and we run about five miles out to the reef. I always try and go with another wave runner. Just for safety reasons, it's always best to, to do these dives, even if it's in shallow water, to have someone with you. But uh, there's some times where I don't have anybody and I need to get out there by myself and I try and keep it as safe as possible. It's important that you remember everything. If you forget something, it could put, put a damper on your entire day. And that's why I put this video together. So it will help you to remember everything that you may need while you're offshore. Your items may be different from mine. And if you think that I'm forgetting something, please leave a comment. This is a very nice option to have. It allows you to dial in on a, a few key spots that you may have saved and uh, save you some time out there hunting for the lobster if you know a few spots. If you don't already have a cooler rack on the back of your wave runner you can fashion one out of PVC or you can look at my other videos and see what I've done in terms of ordering. It's nice to have a cooler back here. You can store your gear in it and uh, keep your fish cold, keep your lunch cold and it's a real nice thing to have if you're heading out lobstering. A compass is very nice to have as a safety item and a peace of mind if my GPS ever went out or if I got blocked in with fog or storm, I can always navigate back with my, my compass. Anybody heading offshore, lobstering or fishing or anything, consider uh, purchasing one and, and uh, sticking it on or bolting it onto your wave runner. We'll start off over here with a uh, wetsuit. Even in the summer, if the water's warm, you want some sort of protection from jellyfish and, and coral and uh, just the, uh, the elements, anything you come in contact with, you're being scratched up on the reef. It doesn't have to be thick. I think this is about three millimeter thickness. And this one's made by Body Glove, but there's many different companies that'll make a, a good uh, wetsuit for you. And then if you decide to go out during the winter time, you'll need a thicker wetsuit and also more weight to hold you down. You'll need to bring some fins with you. These are more for deep, deep diving, uh, made by Cressy. But if you're just shallow water lobstering, a small set of fins will, do, will work just fine, something like that. If you do have the closed back end here, you want to use a booty so you're uh, Foot, uh, the back of your foot doesn't get all chafed up and you'll want the thin uh, booty sock for that. The, the difference between the, the thin booty and the thick booty with the rubber on the bottom is that these are not made to go into these here. These booties are made for this sort of fin up here. It's always good to have these even if you do go out with these because if you stop at a sandbar or you're walking on coral in a shallow area you would do want to have these so I bring both types out with me when I'm going lobstering. Uh, you need a weight belt to hold yourself down and help you get down to the bottom especially if you're wearing a wetsuit and uh, I'll usually get away with two weights and but sometimes I'll need a little bit more and I'll bring uh, a three weighted weight belt out with me and uh, you just have to adjust the the weights to your uh, your body size and the amount of uh, uh, size of wetsuit that you're wearing yeah these are two pound weights right here and I've got two of them mounted and that gets me down just fine your masks uh, you want a good mask you don't want to skimp on that you want to get something that's really good that's uh, going to be comfortable on your face. It's going to make a difference of uh, you having a good trip or a bad trip. And I recommend that you bring two. We've, we've broke masks out there before and it's good to have a backup. The, you also need some to remember your anti-fog gel. 
otherwise you're not going to be seeing much of anything this is very important and we've forgotten in the past and uh, it's not fun you can use spit but nothing works better than the the stuff you can buy at the store um, of course your snorkel there's many different gloves out there that you can use for lobstering uh, AFCO makes a good one that's just great for uh, running the wave runner and also it can be used for lobstering Telos makes a pair and this is just a generic lobster uh, I think they're made by hammerhead and it's rubber on the inside they're very good uh, guaranteed not to be pierced if you grab one of those lobsters lobsters are very spiny and uh, they can uh, really do damage to your hands if you're not wearing the proper gloves so I recommend that you uh, get one or two sets and try them out see what you like best when you're offshore here in the Keys and pretty much anywhere you need a dive flag and you need to display it while you're in the water when you're out of the water you need to uh, take this and roll it up and hide it it's uh, illegal they can give you a ticket for flying it while you're uh, driving your wave runner or boat for catching your lobster there are several different things tools that you can use and I've got a few on display here first thing you want to make sure you have is a net a small net like this and a lot of times you'll see the lobster just walking on the bottom you can scoop them up with the net real easy sneak up on them uh, the next thing you want to have is a tickle stick if they're stuck back in a rock you can use this and uh, stick it underneath them and tickle their tail and they'll sometimes walk out and you scoop them up with the net. This uh, is made by Oceanus, a cable on the end and a pull device up here. And when you pull this here back like that, it pulls that noose tight and grabs a hold of the lobster and it cannot be released until you press this little button here. So this is a manual way of, of uh, grabbing your lobster. This one here does the same thing, except it's got a spring in there and it's automatic. It's called the equalizer. It's a lobster snare. And when you press this button right here, the snare uh, shuts closed and it grabs hold real tight to your lobster. They can sneak out of that. I've had them get out in the past and so you want to get them get a hold of them with your hand as quickly as possible this will hold a little bit tighter because you're using a, a manual amount of force and you can adjust how tight it goes around the lobster this is just a set amount and oftentimes it's not enough but this works great i've caught lobster with with both these chinook work very well for us they don't chafe underneath the arms and they got plenty of storage any life preserver will work but uh, you may have trouble with uh, chafing or being uncomfortable. These, uh, these are really good. And I, uh, this is my second one that I've owned. A lot of features where you can store things. It's got a whistle and uh, uh, holds up real well to the salt environment with the zippers and uh, very minimal corrosion as long as you rinse them off. You want something that you can keep a VHF radio in and store some other gear. I keep a bag in the front of my Wave Runner and this has a jacket, a neoprene jacket. It's a quarter inch and uh, its purpose is if somebody develops hypothermia or if I get real cold when I'm out of, coming out of the water, especially during the winter, I always have a uh, neoprene jacket to put on. It's nice and comfortable, easy to get on and it has a hood and I, it also provides some buoyancy in the front of the wave runner. You always want to uh, bring extra rope with you in case you needed a tow or you need to tie up to another boat or for anything uh, securing to a dock, you always want plenty of rope. So never uh, go out without extra. Your anchors are very important. It's gonna um, ensure your safety while you're in the water and make sure your wave runner doesn't pull loose or drift off. And uh, this is the one that I use when I'm off on the reef. It has the, uh, these prongs here that you can adjust for storage. They clamp together. And then when you're getting ready to deploy it, you can spread these prongs apart like that. It has a chain attached to it and that holds it down on the bottom and allows it to grab hold of uh, as it drags along. 
when you set these down initially if it's sandy bottom you may drag for just 10 or feet or so until it hooks onto something and digs down there is an alternative that you can use and and it's uh, these round weight uh, anchors this one is a 15 pound with some chain on it this will not hold in wind and harsh currents out on the reef and so i don't recommend it um, you can get away with it sometimes but the best bet is to have one of these pronged anchors a smaller cooler that i'll put inside of my bigger cooler and i make sure i have uh, fresh water and some snacks and plenty of ice I, you don't know how long you're going to be out there for sometimes if you get into them real good or you you're having a great time so bring plenty of water can't hurt to have extra your cooler i use a, a coleman cooler 70 quart cooler and what I do is I put all of my equipment in there and I'll close this up and I'll also use that to throw the lobster in and uh, weight belts, everything gets put in there. It's re very easy to access on the back of the wave runner. Just wanna show you what this cooler looks like as it's loaded up. Uh, it's a great thing to have when you're out there to throw all your stuff in. And what I'll do is load it up, close the lid and just put a bungee over the top and that holds everything secure until I get out there. But you can fit your cooler in there. You've got your gloves, your uh, anchor, your snare, mask, booties, fins, weight belts, net. It all fits nicely in there. You wanna bring some towels to make sure you have something to dry yourself off with when you get out of the water. For sun protection, you wanna make sure that you have a pair of good sunglasses, preferably polarized, and uh, keep them on. The sun can do some serious damage to your eyes. Um, also, a good hat to protect you. It can get uh, really hot out there, and uh, you don't wanna come in with a bad sunburn at the end of the day. I use this to protect my neck. It also has the hood option to it, and these work really well. Uh, when you're in the water and you have a mask on, you can still protect your scalp from uh, sun damage and sunburn. And uh, when you're riding on the wave runner, you put this down and you protect your neck. I always bring uh, some sort of wicking shirt with me that uh, provides some uh, sun protection, SPF rated, and uh, it dries off very quickly when you get out of the water and works really well. It's good to have a good sunblock with you, waterproof preferably, uh, and some chapstick for your lips. I use uh, the Copper Tone Water Babies or whatever is available as long as it's rated for sport or water. And of course you don't want to forget your lanyard. And keep this on, if you're, especially if you're doing a solo trip out, keep this on your wrist at all times. In the event that you fell off, you didn't want you want to be able to disable the engine and get back on safely. In the rear of the Wave Runner, this is my storage compartment, and in there I keep also some extra rope, uh, th uh, throw rope, throw to somebody in the water that needed help or or for towing. You can tow with that. A first aid kit I keep in here with uh, lots of bandages and triple antibiotic, and that's airtight sealed so I don't have to worry about it, it uh, getting wet or uh, degrading. That gets sealed up and is waterproof and is under the rear seat. I keep this in the front of my wave runner when I'm going offshore, be it lobstering or fishing or anything. And it has a flare gun in there. Very important to have this as a safety item, as a peace of mind with, with three shells. Also have some handheld flares a uh, light beacon in the event that I was stuck at night this would send out a, a strobe and uh, an extra pair of goggles always if uh, I didn't have my mask and I was offshore fishing I could use this to dive under the wave runner and free up any line or any anything that was tangled in the in the water and also you want a whistle I'm a, bit, a little bit redundant in this system I have one in here and on my life vest and uh, for if you're lost or you can't find your other uh, wave runner that you're out there with, this is a good thing to have uh, to signal, especially if you're stuck in fog. You never know when that those things can roll in on you. You want at least one VHF radio on your wave runner, and uh, this one is waterproof. It's submersible. 
and uh, make sure it's charged up properly. I bring a storage case that seals up and is watertight and in there I keep my cell phone and fully charged, make sure you've got a good charge on it. A little pill container, I keep some Benadryl and some Motrin in the event that somebody uh, was uh, in trouble. I also some Dramamine in there. Um, if you have somebody with a jellyfish sting or an allergic reaction, that Benadryl may help you. And uh, of course my boat US card, my uh, fishing license, uh, my insurance card, and my driver's license. It's important to bring a paper towel with you. When you're out there and you get out of the water, you want to dry off your sunglasses and put on a nice clear uh, pair of sunglasses. And especially when you're running the Wave Runner, uh, the splashing from the water can get up in your face and uh, it's nice to be able to clean that. There's several different types of containers. Any will work. They need a small one, big one. These will all fit in the Wave Runner front compartment. This is probably one of the most important pieces of equipment that you can bring out on the, the Wave Runner, especially if you're leaving your Wave Runner and going in the water. You can bring this with you. It's the Nautilus Lifeline uh, for divers, and it's an emergency beacon. It automatically transmits your uh, GPS location and alerts and an alert message to any modern VHF radio on channel 70 if you were to set off the alarm which is underneath that little switch right there. It also uh, allows you to talk to other vessels. You cannot uh, uh, receive but you can transmit on this and uh, hail help if you're in the water. Uh, I keep this with me when I'm in the, when I'm diving or snorkeling and you can clip it onto whatever you have and it'll go down underwater with you just fine. The antenna folds up and this whole thing clips closed like that and when you're ready to deploy it you open this up, the antenna goes up and it'll send out that signal. This could get you out of a pinch if you ever to come up to the surface and find that your wave runner's gone or uh, you to get caught in a current. This is a real nice thing to have. I wrote the directions on here, exactly how it, how it functions. So if I'm ever in the water, it'd be real easy to uh, set it off and to uh, talk or do what I needed to do to get rescued. And of course, you don't want to forget your GoPro camera or your video camera, document all the nice lobster that you're catching. Whether I'm headed offshore for lobster or fishing, you want to keep a current uh, updated regulation for uh, whatever you're going for. This is the lobster from Mon Monroe County. And what I do is I print up a couple different sheets of these online. You can find them on the Department of Natural Resources or FWC site. It gives you the current regulations for lobster and fish, the sports season, all that stuff. I seal them in Ziploc bags and I put them in my boat, my wave runner, and uh, upstairs, downstairs, so I always have one with me that I can refer to and uh, bring out with me. I know it's a lot to remember and a lot of things uh, to think about before you're heading out on your trip. I know you've got a lot of other things like your lunch and getting uh, your family together. But if you put together a list that will uh, help you, it's helped me in the past, as I said earlier, uh, something like this where you've got everything written down and you can just go through and make sure you don't forget anything. I've left enough things at home uh, to know that uh, it's no fun when you do it. And uh, it's inspired me to make a list and laminate and uh, check and double check on things before I head out. I use this for fishing, uh, but I also will refer to it for lobstering. And you can take a look at everything there is to remember. There's a lot to, that you can forget. Heading out on a solo lobstering trip and just getting everything loaded up. I'm gonna run to the reef and see if I can grab a few lobster that are left over from the mini season. We just had a storm front push through and it uh, looks like we've got some clearing in the weather.
set and get in and see if there's any lobster I'll show you how I do this I keep a rope tied to the front of the wave runner and I'll put a little hitch in the, the anchor line and hook that rope that's connected to the front of the wave runner to it and then just let it pull out and when it gets nice and tight on that front line that I have connected, that I pre-connected and just clamped to the anchor line. Then it'll no longer pull this line out and I could hook it to the front here. And so when I jump up back on the wave runner, all I have to do is grab this line right here and it'll get me uh, my line back. That's what it looks like as it's going out. There's the... lobster so I think we've got enough for a good meal and I think we're heading now just a gorgeous day out here lobstering by myself and uh, maybe one foot seas not many boats around there's a couple boats in the distance but it was thundering lightning and storming earlier so it scared a lot of people from coming out and it turned out to be a perfect overcast day Nice for snorkeling. Just got lucky. Glad I got into them. Realized this lobster has eggs. You can see that on the back there. And those must be released. Uh, as it turns out, two of my big, what I thought were keeper lobster, have eggs. And they need to be released. Plenty to drink and something to snack on when you're out here. And 
packed up here, ready to go. See when I want to pull up the anchor, I just pull on this one line. It's pretty neat here at low tide. You can pull right up to concrete. There's a little bit of a dry area. Low, low tide. Allows you to snorkel and do a little lobstering. Hopefully this video will help you to uh, get everything that you need together. If you think I've forgotten something or I could bring something different or better, uh, please uh, leave a comment and uh, I hope that I see you out there. I hope uh, you're able to get on your wave runner and, and uh, get out and do some lobstering or fishing or whatever it is. Uh, they're a lot of fun as I said and uh, I recommend it. Hope you enjoy the video. If you did and this is helpful, please like and subscribe. Sometimes we get some crazy stuff washing up in the canal. This bale of hay showed up at the doorstep yesterday. Crazy. Just drifting down the canal.